Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be trying out some new makeup and just getting ready and sharing my initial thoughts, my first impressions on a lot of new makeup. So we're going to be dipping back into the Hindash Monochromance palette and using the dreaded terrifying greens in this palette and see how I can make them work for me. We're going to be revisiting the MAC Stack Mascara a couple weeks on and seeing what my updated thoughts are on that one. I have both of the new shades of Wayne Goss Blush and Highlight Duo. I have the new by Terry powder, the new CC powder in Sunny Flash, and I also have a new shade of the Dior Addict lipstick. And with that, I got some samples of the reformulated Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation that lots of you have asked for my thoughts on. So without further ado, let's get started playing with some makeup. So I thought we would dip back in to the Hindash Monochromance is the name she knew she knew palette today now i just really want to live like here this is where I, my happy house is okay but we've yet to touch this pan and i feel like you've got to forgive the people what they want i think people want to see can i make these green shades work is there like something that i can wear out of this pan because ultimately if you're going to buy an eyeshadow palette you want to be able to use all of the shades so i'm here to take one for the team and see what i can do with this pan and whether i can enjoy it in any way shape or form or you know if not worst case scenario we can all have a good laugh so you know either way we're all winners here well no not so much me but you, you guys good for you so I'm gonna start off just to give me something to play with in the crease. I'm just gonna go, I think in here, I'm gonna go into the lighter pan and just give myself a bit of a transition. Refer number 16, I try, I try to remember to tell you what number brush we're using because <laughs> I'm useless. So you may notice I'm a bit croaky today, a bit froggy of throat, some would say. I think we've all just had like one big cold since, you know, society came back together. We're now all just sharing our colds with each other again, which is nice, you know, nice to reconnect. Um, but yeah, I have had like one cold after another and today is no exception. The colds are just continuing to pour in and yeah. It's a miserable day here as well. It was really weird because this is, today I'm filming, this is Friday that I'm filming. I know this isn't going up on a Friday, but I filmed it on a Friday, okay? Mind your business. And last week I didn't get to take my kids to gymnastics. It was not on because there was a competition at their gymnastics center. And so we missed gymnastics. I felt really sad. And I just thought literally what a weirdo that I love just taking my kids to their like, clubs i just love it and i think look, most people normal people hate it but it's literally i just have the time of my life get a piece of cake coffee have a sit down and i just love watching them pretend to do what in, in their head presumably looks like a cartwheel but in reality is just not it's funny being from a sporting background like sport is really important like i want my kids to be involved in sport i want them to try lots of sports i want them to experience that part of life not that i necessarily want them to you know go to the olympics or anything but i do want them in some way to be involved and have some sporty experiences i think that's really important for health and just you learn different lessons it's different experiences different lessons that you learn and different qualities that sport requires that you just don't really get at school and so you know I love them doing their sports but obviously they're super young and there are sports that they are naturally blessed in and naturally are kind of suited to as I was myself and there's some that they just simply are not and gymnastics is one that neither of my children is especially gifted in but it is it makes for a hilarious watch I'll, I'll say that my daughter has about as much daintiness in her as I do you know the apple does not fall far from the tree. Okay, so I just had a fun time just sort of building up from this pan in my crease just to give me something to work from. And now comes the terrifying bit. I'm gonna start off kind of on the border 
on the border here, as we will call it, and we're gonna go into the crease. I don't know what's happening, I am terrified. I don't know if that's coming across, but we're gonna just see how this works out. I'm gonna use some light hands today. I've borrowed some. And we're gonna try some light-handedness, and we're gonna try and see if I can pull off a look out of this pan that I would wear and that I enjoy because life and makeup certainly is just about playing and enjoying and pushing yourself and living on the edge, you know, even if you do end up looking ridiculous. What I have noticed, I watch Patty Alonso, wonderful Patty, much better with colour than me and eyeshadow in general, but especially colour. And I did notice that this pan, what she called Forever Inked, is the green pan's name, official title. And what I noticed in her video is that this sort of looks, it on the eye, it was kind of much more like grayish, it had a sort of grayish sort of undertone rather than being like as bright as it looks in the pan, which I think is the theme of this palette. On the eye, much less intimidating, much less bright, much less colorful than it maybe looks in here, which is for me, definitely a good thing. The shadows are very soft and subtle and buildable. So you can definitely get away with these shades if you are someone like me, who's a scaredy cat and a wimp when it comes to color. Sorry, I thought we'd actually zoom in so you can actually have a chance to see what's going on here, for goodness sake. But I wanted to buy this palette because it was just so different to anything I own and I found it so beautiful, although not necessarily like my type of colours or my typical preference. It was so different to the things that I already have and I think that that's, when that happens these days, it's kind of exciting in itself because it's like, oh wow, it's not something that I already have 10 of, it's something completely different and I fully appreciate the creativity and the uniqueness of these palettes from Hindash and I just wanted to just see what, you know, I could do with it and I've just been so surprised and now I'm I'm surprised again because I feel like, this is, I like where this is going and I was not expecting to at all. Just kind of not looking super green and bright on the eyes like I thought. It's much more, it's just looking like smoky cool tones, which I'm, I'm here for. So I'm just going right in there now. I'm just going to build this up with the deepest bit of this pan. But my fear, just like in my review video, is subsiding. I'm starting to feel more confident. I feel like this is going to be... Fine, it's gonna be fine guys. My husband's taking me out for lunch. So I didn't wanna look completely bonkers, but I did think there was a high chance I might and I was all right with it. I had the funniest comment the other day that actually had me howling because I was wearing two completely different eye looks in a video, which is like often the case, you know, I'll film a review and then I'll film another video afterwards the same day and I'll just keep on the makeup. I don't have time to go and take all my makeup off and redo it. To in between videos, you know, like time is time is of the essence. We are constantly in a panic here, trying to get things done in time. And so yeah, I'd filmed my Tom Ford quad video, two different eye looks, and then I filmed another video afterwards. And someone commented on that video saying that they thought I must have done my makeup in the dark. And that's why my eye, why I had two different eyeshadows on. <laughs> They were completely different looks, okay? Now I understand if the eye looks were not like completely symmetrical or you know, maybe one was a little smokier than the other or maybe my wings were like not completely perfectly matched. That, that might be, you know, a valid thought process, but this was two completely different eye looks. Even if I did, for whatever bizarre reason, have to do my makeup in a darkened room, I do have eyes, I can, <laughs> I can see they're completely different. That did have me howling. That was very funny, very funny comment. But no, I didn't. I have fantastic lighting in my makeup space. Very, very lucky, very lucky with the light that I have. But I do actually get to see that my eyes are in the same ballpark. While we're talking about hilarious comments, not so much hilarious, but just ones that I find really interesting is the ones that I get on my divorce video. So I did a divorce story time like years ago and it went viral and it was like really unpleasant time because I just had all these horrendous 
men just bullying me in the comment section for weeks and attacking me and just hating me in general. Just w women haters came for my neck in the comment section of that video and it was dark, dark times. But it has now like died out, you know, that video has, has died a death, it's now like a few years old. But I continue to get like the odd comment on there and it just cracks me up how many people will ask me like how my how's my how's my ex doing? Like how is it how did it work out? Like how is he now? Are they still together? Like, what? How do you think I would know that? Do you think we're still in touch? That I'm like checking in on him to see how his life worked out? Like no, I I definitely have no idea. Quite literally no idea. Thank goodness. But that always cracks me up that people were like asking me. The other funny thing on that video that people used to say, these like men who hate women or who have been through a horrendous divorce and just assume that like we're all the same or something, whatever was going on in, in those men's minds when they were just ripping me to shreds. And what was interesting is how many of them said that they like wanted his side of the story or like oh it would be like we should hear his side of the story and I was like I mean you could ask like did you think I was going to get him on do you think it was going to be like a collab we were going to sit down <laughs> and I was also going to give you his side of the story like that's not how this works so I am just patting the lightest part of the pan now onto my lid and it's definitely not as light as I thought or as it looks in the pan which is very interesting and again a positive for me because it just makes it so much easier to work with and to wear like I feel like this is almost we've made like a pretty wearable look out of this so I'm excited about that now I don't know if you follow me on my Instagram but if you don't I should probably tell you here I was talking on my stories the other day about how I accidentally blocked someone I think I've resolved it now but I was going through, so on YouTube there is, you go into a comment section, right? And there are all your comments. There is then also this other inbox that is called the held for review box. And in there, you will find spam, you'll find rude comments, you'll find, and if you have any blocked words, you can block words on YouTube that you don't wanna see. Um, if you have any blocked words, then that comments containing those blocked words will be in there. But you'll also quite often find comments that there is literally nothing wrong with that YouTube has mistaken mistakenly for whatever reason put in that box it may be that there's a swear word but sometimes there's nothing wrong at all there's no swearing there's nothing wrong and you can't fathom why the comments in there so I you shouldn't go in there because obviously it is full of trolls and horrible comments and the idea is that you don't have to see it but I just can't let it be I need to clear it out and I need to approve the comments that there's nothing wrong with to show on my channel because the comments in there don't show up on your channel so if you ever think I've deleted your comment by the way I haven't it's just been filtered into there automatically and I check it every few weeks and I'll approve any that are fine and they'll show on my YouTube. So I was going through doing that the other day and the block or the hide user from channel, which is effectively YouTube's block mechanism, I pressed that instead of approving a message. I didn't read the message. I was just going through trying to tick all the messages that were fine. So I don't know who left it, who commented it, and I just accidentally blocked them instead of approving the message and I <laughs> was horrified horrified. So like I said, if you think you've been blocked and you did nothing wrong, please let me know what your username is and I will undo it. But I think I've done it now because I found the list of where everybody I've, I've blocked lives and I'm presuming that the top person is like the most recent. So hopefully I, I've unblocked that person now, but we don't know. So I'm pretty happy with this. I'm quite liking it. I definitely find that this is like a wearable usable look not for like every day but there's you know a day when I might feel like rocking this this green so yeah I'd count this as a win this is about as good as it gets I kind of wish that the the green the lid color went a bit lighter I would have liked that to be a bit lighter but I'm not mad at it so I'm going to use the max stack mascara again now I did review this if you haven't seen that already I would recommend checking that out it went very very well I was a big fan of this mascara and I have now been using this for a good couple of weeks and nothing has changed on my thoughts from that review I'm really enjoying it I like everything about it 
And yeah, so far so good. As I said in my pin comment, that I find it really easy to remove, which is a bonus. I know for lots of people, I don't really care about that. Like if it's a little trickier to remove, I feel like my oil-based cleanser will get any old mascara off, but I do find this one like it is noticeably on the easier end to get off. So I know that is important for some people. What I love about it is it gives me that sort of separated drama that I seek and that whole the stackable concept so the concept of the mascara is that basically you can add 500 coats as many coats as your heart desires and it will just keep on building 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 until the cows come home effectively and I do find that to be true but I also find it to be true that it gives you a super good amount of all of the things I'm looking for length drama lift separation with one coat so I would call this like one sort of heavy comprehensive coat you know I haven't redipped I haven't let it dry or anything in between coats and, and gone back in but I have spent you know a, a amount of time putting on a lot of the mascara so this is like a comprehensive coat and like I'm super happy with this as a one coat mascara. So you know, if you've only got time for one one good coat in the morning, but you want you know a certain amount of kapow from your lashes, this is definitely one that can give you that. I'm using the larger size, not the micro brush. So I am really enjoying using this one on the top lashes and then the micro brush on my lower lashes, but I also appreciate that most people don't wanna buy both. Um, so, I mean, my recommendation would 100% be to buy the macro, the, ma the large brush, is it called macro? Mega, mega brush. I would buy the mega brush and just be careful on your lower lashes. So I'm gonna be using my Tom Ford primer. I love this primer, still loving it. I possibly do prefer this to the Tatcha Slow Canvas. So that answers that question, I suppose, for anyone who had that question. It's very, very silky. It feels beautiful on the skin. It helps my makeup last, but it also just gives me such a smooth look to the foundations that I use with it. And that has just, nothing has changed. I've now used this with like all of my favorite foundations. And I feel like that, is the same across the board with all of those foundations I've tried it with. It still is definitely giving it a perfected, smoothing appearance to the foundations. Let's do another coat of mascara while that works its way in. Lots of people have been asking me how this stacks up <sighs> against some of my favorite mascaras. So I am going to, I'm working on a like top five mascara. So if you just give me one moment, I will make all your mascara ranking and comparison dreams have come true very shortly. We're, it's coming, it's coming, we're working on it. So I did get some samples of the new reformulated, oh, good Lord. So I got some samples of the reformulated Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation, and I thought, why not give that a try while we're here? Now I had to, I'm having to use the N shades because they only have the Ns available as samples, and usually I like the, W O shades. This is 3N. Can't use too much to swatch because I've only got sample size. Mm. Not bad. I think I'm just going to mix these together because otherwise I won't have enough. So yeah, this is going to be shade 3N and 2N mixed together, which is certainly going to be good enough of a match to tell me how I like it. I did try in actually in exactly the same way. I never purchased the original Skin Glow foundation, so I don't have that one to do like a side by side, but I have tried it in the same way. I tried um, a sample of that one when it first came out. I decided not to review this one or to like buy the bottle, a full size bottle of this because I liked the original Skin Glow, but I didn't love it. It was just kind of okay for me. And I think it came out like at the same time as a lot of foundations that I just liked more, like the Tom Ford Shade and Luminate and the Estee Lauder Futurist and a lot of those sort of glowier foundations came out around the same time. And it just didn't sort of stack up against my favorites. So I've heard from people who are big fans of this, the original formula, that this reformulation, as per the flipping usual for some reason, 
is like not as good as the original and isn't that flipping always the case so often these luxury brands reformulating things that there was nothing wrong with in the first place well to my knowledge maybe there was something wrong you tell me but yeah lots of people's holy grail love of their life this foundation and then they went and changed it and for lots of people ruined it so that's unfortunate but yeah i thought for that reason as the original was like a like not a love if the reformulated version is not as good as the original then I'm not going to like this one that much, am I? But, you know, if they're giving it away, I might as well try it out for you guys, you know? So the shade undoubtedly is a little off. I mean, I think it'll be hard to see. It's kind of hard to sort of judge undertones on camera, but most neutral shades pull pink on me because I am not neutral. I have an olive undertone and I don't know if you can kind of see, it's hard to see on camera, but especially in winter, I have a really strong olive tone. A neutral shade tends to just really look quite pink or just off, it just looks off on me. Warm tones, you know, classic warm tones tend to look super orange on me. It's tricky undertone town up in here, but this is certainly workable and I'm certainly used to Shades looking a little off because not many brands, although Dior is one of them, Dior does do a really nice olive undertone shades, especially in the lighter category, which is quite hard to find, but they do like a 1WO and a 2WO, which is really great lighter olive undertones, which I love. I'm not being funny. I really like this. I think this looks really, really good. It's very smooth, really evened out my skin tone. I mean, I probably used half of each of those samples. I've got so much left on my palette, like I barely used much at all. I'm trying to pick up a really small amount with my brush and I've got a nice like medium coverage, really evened out all my redness and my discoloration and things. And it's looking really nice and healthy and glowy. Sorry, I'm getting a bit brighter here. So I just had to change my camera settings to cope with the additional light, we were just getting brighter and brighter. So I think you can probably see now a bit better, but it just looks really nice and smooth and juicy, glowy skin. So yeah, I think one of the things I'd heard people complain about with the reformulation is that this wasn't as glowy as the original, but this is enough glow for me. Maybe it's gonna dry down a lot more matte. So we'll see. I'm gonna go in with my usual Pat McGrath concealer and powder and we'll be back. So it is definitely sort of drying down a bit less dewy, but I think that's a bad thing because I think it was obviously quite shiny. I'm just gonna go and finish my eyes using the lighter part of that green on the under eyes with my Sonia G Lotus detail. Is it detail? Soft definer. Don't, don't just make up the names. Actually find them out, girl. I'm starting to get into a panic now because my husband's just told me we've got like 20 minutes till we need to leave for lunch. And I was like, oh, fine. <laughs> but let's do a third little coat of this MAC mascara because, you know, if they're gonna claim it's stackable, then we're gonna try it out, you know? Definitely left these lashes a bit too long now to try and actually build on them because they are fully dried down, but even so, it's still managing pretty well, I would say. I also find this mascara does not flake, does not smudge, does not transfer throughout the day, which for lots of people is hard to find, I will say. But yeah, it's definitely a top five mascara for me, this one. I was very impressed. I'm kind of hoping it's like the beginning of like the Mac resurgence. Because I think it's unreasonable that like teenagers these days, like Mac is not like the brand, you know, cause that's just a travesty. And I'm just gonna do a tiny bit on my lower lashes, which is how I use this. I do prefer, as I said, the micro brush on these lower lashes cause it's just a little bit smaller, but this is still a very workable, nice lower, lash mascara on its own. So I did indeed pick up this new limited edition by Terry, Sunny Flash 
CC powder. I talked about this in my Will I Buy It? And you guys told me to try it. So here she is. Now one she, I mean, that is beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. That is pretty. Very strong perfumed scent, I noticed. I don't know if this is going to bronze me, but I sure do want to try. I mean, the answer is no. The answer is no, I think. What do you think? Do you see anything? Mm, there's definitely something there, but it is quite sort of warm for me, very kind of orangey. I mean, that's definitely giving a subtle bronze, you know. I take it all back. It's definitely got a subtle bronze. The scent is overwhelming. It's punching me right in the nostrils. So if you have a sensitive nose, steer clear, steer clear. Oh yes, she builds, she builds. Definitely can get a nice bronze out of this. I didn't think you could. I looked at it and I thought, no, that's not going to bronze. But actually, <laughs> she was happily mistaken. It does bronze and I'm kind of feeling it. I'm liking that. Oh, okay, okay. Can you see the glow, the luminosity, the smoothness? Okay, I don't think I had high hopes for this, you know. I did not have high hopes. I'm just gonna say it, I was wrong. I was wrong, did not have high hopes. I could do this all day. In fact, I might need to, but it is very subtle, but it's there, it's bronzed, it's there. And I take it all back. It's very beautiful, like smoothing luminosity is what I'm getting. But it is, it is a warm on the warmer side for a bronzer, but it's also not as orange as it perhaps swatched. So that's great. So moving on, I've got the two new blush and highlight duos from Wayne Goss, which I am excited to try. I was very excited when I saw, I can't get in. I don't have time for this, Wayne. I felt like the previous colors that he had in these duos, like there was just one missing for me. Like I felt like I liked the highlight out of some of them and I liked the blush out of the others, but there was always like one I would, I wanted to swap two about. So when I saw these, I was like, oh, these both look right up my street. <sighs> that one is gorgeous. This is Desert Blossom and just right out the bat, looking at the two, this is the one that is like speaking to my soul. The highlight is just, it's just dreamy. So we have Desert Blossom and Sweet Wild Flower. I mean, they're both stunning. Okay, so this is Desert Blossom. The blush looks very, very subtle. The highlight are less so. And then we have Sweet Wild Flower, which upon swatching looks like it might be my favorite. We're gonna try them both, let's find out. So we're gonna try uh, Desert Blossom first. Sonia G Fan Pro on this side. I went quite light. Oh, that is very beautiful. Very pretty. That color is melting very nicely into my skin tone without leaving like a cast. Beautiful. Definitely a highlight that could be built up or used quite nice and softly, but it's gonna give you that glow. It's very smooth, very smooth, really not enhancing texture. And it's really, as I'm just kind of blending it into the skin, it's really melting in there, which is lovely. I'm just gonna dust my brush off and then we're going to go in to Sweet Wild Flower. I think I'm gonna be even more light-handed with this one because it's very light. This one is going to be a bit lighter on the skin. So it's, what the hell? So this highlight's definitely going to be brighter and it is enhancing my texture more. I think then this side is melting in this side. Just It just suits my skin tone more. This is a bit light, so it's going to be brighter, which is really strange. And I think this is one of the things about these 
duos. I know lots of people are saying they wish they could have like pick and mixed their own combination because the blush in this palette is darker than the blush in this palette, yet the highlights are like the other way around. That's I think what is slightly tricky with these, is they're not necessarily the duos I would choose to put together if I had free reign. But we're going back into the blush. Just give me old forehead a bit of a buff while we're here. But a very soft, natural, pretty blush really does melt in beautifully to the skin. And then let's go with the blush on this side. This is pretty, very pretty. Definitely shows up on me with a bit of building for sure. Not lacking pigment there. I find these compacts really annoyingly tricky to open. I fully just snapped my nail off, which I'm raging about trying to open it. So that's just a side note. I find them a bit annoying to open, but they're a really nice, sturdy, compact. And I think the products inside are lovely. The Desert Blossom is by far my favorite. I just think the highlight really is melting into my skin and more subtle and just suits my skin tone better. I definitely feel like I'm seeing more texture on this side and the highlight just isn't kind of melting into the skin. Just it's a bit too light and bright against my skin, which is adding to like the texture that you can see. Whereas this side looks far smoother. It's just more melted into the skin and just softer, which I prefer. So this is definitely my favorite. And now for lippies, as I suspected I would, I did in fact go back and order another shade of the amazing Dior Addict lipsticks that I loved. I just felt like I thought this shade was gonna to be too light for me. This is Mimi Rose, and I just thought the swatches looked gorgeous, but I thought it would be too light for me. But then having tried a lot of the other colors, I think these have enough color to them. And I also find the swatches online to be quite accurate. So I thought I would try it. I think because it is a lighter shade, I've just wiped my lips clean of foundation just so we can get the maximum pigmentation. Oh, that's so pretty. Just the prettiest, softest shade like ever of life. I am just oh, I'm so glad I went back for that one. I really was getting FOMO because I really loved the look of this shade, but I just didn't think it would work for me or my skin tone. But what I am finding is that the, the colors, the swatches, the lip swatches they have on Dior's website are actually accurate. I think a lot of the time you order them and they're much lighter or they're not as pigmented when they arrive. So that's why I didn't order this one initially because I just thought, oh, it's not going to be enough. It's gonna to be too um, soft, too subtle, too close to my skin tone, but it's just, just right, just right. I can just about get away with it. Obviously I could use a lip liner if I wanted, but I can also get away with it without. So pretty. And the smell of these, tell me about it. So here we have a little close up for you of this finished makeup. I'm happy with how everything turned out today. This eye look is not my typical, but the shadows worked beautifully. They blended nicely and I could certainly wear this color, which I really didn't know or think that I would be able to. This has been such a revelation for me, this palette. I just think it's really been fun, pushed me out my comfort zone, but in a really soft, beautiful way. You know, shadows do not have to be really super over the top, mega pigment. You know, they can be softer and just give a more subtle effect while still being impactful color wise. So that has been, you know, surprise after surprise for me, that palette. This foundation, I'm, I'm really liking it. I think it looks really beautiful. I think it looks flawless. It's covered everything with a small amount. It's very smooth. I like that it's got sort of natural luminosity to it. I understand that maybe if the original was super glowy and you loved that one, this is not like a dewy glowy foundation. It's more of like a sort of satiny finish. So maybe that's why people are upset and don't, 
don't get me wrong, I I get it. Like, if Tom Ford was to make my favourite foundation less glowy, I'd be writing a very strongly worded letter, so I understand, but just as a standalone, someone who's not really used the original a lot, this is looking really nice to me, and yeah, beautiful. You guys know how I feel already about the MAC Stack Mascara, but just to give you a sort of longer review, as in not, you know, longer time-wise, don't worry, don't panic, I've got a lunch to go to, but I have now been using this for a couple of weeks and I'm still loving it and really enjoying it and nothing has changed from my initial review and it certainly isn't, you know, starting to dry out super quickly or anything like that. I continue to love it and we'll be doing a favourite mascara rankings and breakdown for you ASAP. Surprise of the video for me was probably the By Terry Brightening CC because I took one look at this and thought this is going to be useless, it's not going to do anything for me, I'm not going to be able to bronze up with this. I thought I'd been taken for a fool and you know I swatched this and I still feel that same way but on the skin it really gave me a lovely soft subtle bit of bronze and I think it does exactly what it claims to do that you can use it as like a bit of an all-in-one quick you know dusting on the high points and it's your bronzer blush and kind of a bit of a subtle glow all in one so I think I'm gonna be keeping on trying this one and so far I'm pleasantly surprised I really thought it was going to do nothing for me but it really gave me a very smooth glow with like a hint of warmth which was exactly what they claimed and so you know I eat my words. The Wayne Goss Blush and Highlight Duos, first impressions, I love them both. Definitely kind of different beasts. This is giving like full glam beaming as far as the highlight. And then this is a much more soft, subtle glow, more like my typical highlight. I love both blushes. I think they both work and they're very, very pretty. And they were exactly what I was hoping they would be. I think no surprises, they kind of, they went on beautifully easily, nice and buildable, nice and soft initially, had no issues with blending. And I think they both look really, really nice and I'm enjoying these. So yeah, no surprises. I guess I, I pretty much got what I expected and wanted from both. Again, you guys know how I feel about this lip formula. One of my favorites of all time. Very, very glad I went back for this shade because I really, it was one of like my ultimate picks, but I just didn't think it was gonna work for me. And now I see that it will, it's so pretty. It's just a soft, pretty, elegant shade and kind of different, well, very different to the other shades I picked up in this formula, but pretty different to anything I have as well. It's a, just a very soft, Pinky coral, I would say, but just pretty is the word for this lipstick. It is the prettiest lipstick. And this formula is just doing it for me, left, right, and center. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on all these new products that I picked up. A very successful day. This is not always how these videos go, but I really am loving my makeup right now, which is good because now I'm going out for lunch. So I'm really happy. I'll keep you posted in my monthly faves and fails as to how these products are growing on me or fading on me as the case may be. But yeah, so far, everything is just looking beautiful and I'm really especially surprised by the foundation. I was just thinking it was just going to be horrible and horrible is not the word that I would be giving it. I'm really liking it. I'm liking everything today to be honest and that is a relief because I thought I was going to hate this makeup because I was going into like my most feared shadow in the Hindash Monochromance and I really did not think it would be this wearable and that I would enjoy it as much as I do. And it's, yeah, I'm, thank goodness, I did not think I was gonna be able to leave the house today. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now, bye-bye-bye-bye-bye.